Welcome to MATLAB uh, tutorial. In the last uh, tutorial, we learned how to start up a MATLAB under Windows environment. So now that you know how to uh, open up a MATLAB application, let's learn a little bit about uh, how to define various variables and uh, what we can do with uh, MATLAB. So I'm just going to make this screen a little bigger uh, that uh, the window that corresponds to the command window and command window is the main uh, window through which you will interact um, with uh, MATLAB in the sense you type your commands and it interprets the commands and if it understands what has to be done it will carry out that command and produce the result for you if it does not understand of course it will produce an error message and often these error messages are very cryptic and that's one of the frustrations for a beginner because you won't know uh, what the error message means and we will look at a few examples of those error messages in subsequent modules now suppose I want to uh, define a variable and assign a value to it this you will do in a very standard way for example as a is equal to 5 so here I am defining a new variable a which appears on the left hand side of an equal sign and I'm assigning the value 5 which appears on the right hand side and when I enter it I'm asking MATLAB to interpret this command and execute it so MATLAB immediately creates a variable called A in the workspace as you can see here and its size it indicates as one by one so it is a scalar variable and its class it says it's a double array meaning it's a double position number that can store up to 16 significant digits let's say and in the command window it immediately echoes back that it has carried out the uh, command and says a is equal to 5 now if you want to suppress its output on the command window then you can say a is equal to 5 and put a semicolon at the end and this will have the same effect of assigning the variable a a value of 5 but it will not echo back its response to you now you don't know whether this has really updated the value so let's say b is equal to 5 and put a semicolon there so you know that it has assigned b a value by looking at the workspace because it has now defined a new variable called b so any variable that you define in your workspace uh, will be available for you to use in subsequent calculations suppose i want to define a vector and uh, I will label it as A once again. So I'm going to assign a value of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. This time I did not put a semicolon, so it echoes back, and I want to see what it echoes back for a vector. Now I've reused the variable A, so the a, variable A has now become a double array of size 1 by 5, that is, one row and five column and it takes a storage of 40 bytes and it is still a double array and the values are echoed back to you for, uh, on the screen now if I want to just print out what is the third element of that array I can ask it like this A open parenthesis 3 close parenthesis now I don't have an equal sign so I'm not assigning any value so I'm just saying what is the value of the third element of A and it prints me the value I want to reassign only that element I can do that by saying a 3 equals say 33 then it changes only that element and it still echoes back the full vector a so I can gradually build on this for example if I want to replace elements 3 4 and 5 I can say a uh, 3 2 5 equals say 30 40 50 so I am now on the right hand side creating a vector which is um, the numbers 30 40 and 50 so it's a 3 1 by 3 array and I am replacing it from the third element to the fifth element in the matrix A Okay, so third, fourth, and fourth elements have been replaced by that. So you can access individual elements of an array, and this applies to matrices as well. Uh, if you understand the concept, you already know I uh, have a powerful tool for creating matrices, selectively changing the values, if you like. 
and I, if I want to create for example a column vector there are a couple of ways I can do that I can say for example a is equal to one two three and I can transpose this vector so I'm assigning one two three as a row vector but if I put the transpose operator that becomes a column vector okay um, I can also create it in, the, in another way by saying a is equal to one semicolon two semicolon three now the semicolon indicates that it's the end of a row of inputs and the next row should be begun so after one the two goes to the next row and three goes to the next row so it has the same effect uh, of creating a column vector now you can take the column vector and transpose it it will give you the row vector okay now here i just transpose the vector a and I did not assign it to a particular variable. So whenever I do that, it automatically creates a variable called AMS, short for answer. And it puts that up in the workspace as well. And so there is a new variable called ANDS that has the result of the last operation. As you can see in the command history window, there is a history of all the commands that we have entered. You can scroll back and see what are the things that we have done. Now, if I want to define a matrix, uh, for example, I want to define a matrix A is equal to 1, 2, 3, semicolon, 2, 3, 4, semicolon, 3, 4, 5. So this defines a 3 by 3 matrix. 1, 2, 3, the first three numbers go to the first row, and then a semicolon indicates start the next row, and then 2, 3, and 4 go into the next row, and so on. I can obviously transpose the uh, matrix also, but in this case, it's a symmetric matrix, so if I transpose, I'm going to get the same result. Uh, let's look at uh, <coughs> um, how to address individual elements and how to dynamically increase the size. For example, if I want to add on the fifth row, fifth column a value, I can say A5, comma phi equal to, say, 50. Okay. So it dynamically increases the dimension of that same array A to a 5 by 5 matrix. It knows what are the values for the first 3 by 3 sub matrix. And I've defined the 5 by 5. So everything else is initialized to 0. And it automatically dynamically increases the size of the matrix as you can see here. It's now a 5 by 5 matrix. So when you're reusing a variable, it's only the last value, the current value that is kept in the workspace. Because that variable is the storage location and if you change the value the new value will be stored in the same storage location now I'm going to define a few matrices to show what are the operations that we can do with matrices I'm going to define a diagonal matrix as 1 0 0 0 2 0 0 0 3 3 for example Okay, so a diagonal matrix has elements only on the diagonal and it's zero everywhere else. Now I'm going to define a, what is called a tridiagonal matrix, which appears often in number of separation process models in distillation, uh, as well as in solving differential equations by finite difference methods. So here I'm going to say this as 4, 1, 0, uh, 1, 4, 1, and 0, 1, 4. A uh, tridiagonal matrix has a diagonal element, in this case 4, and one off-diagonal element, one above and one below. In this case, they are all 1. And everything else would be 0. Now, this is a 3 by 3 example. If we have a 10 by 10 example, the structure will still be the same. There will be one diagonal element, one above the diagonal, one below the diagonal. Everything else would be 0. Uh, now, I can define matrix products, scalar products, in the normal way that I would do. Uh, and MATLAB will understand and interpret them. For example, if I say 5 times 4, I'm just going to take the two numbers and produce the result 20. So here the operator is the star, which indicates that it's a product. Okay. Similarly, I can say 5 plus 4. So these are all operations between scalar numbers, but I can do the same thing with matrices. For example, I can say D plus T. So the meaning of t, the plus sign here is defined in the context in which it appears. D and T are both matrices, and that simply means that take every element of D and add it to every element of T corresponding element and produce the result. 
So it produces the result, which is the sum of every element of D with every element of T that you will find here. And the same thing with the product, D times D. And you can verify, of course, where from linear algebra you would have seen what is the definition for a matrix product. It's simply take the row of D and multiply with the corresponding element from a column D and sum them up to produce this element. And you do the same thing for every element in the product. But the important thing to notice is that the meaning of the operator is defined in the context in which it appears. So it's a very natural and general way of implementing these things in MATLAB. And that's what makes MATLAB uh, quite powerful. Um, <coughs> We will continue to define a few other variables and maybe learn to uh, generate some uh, simple plots. Uh, one of the things that MATLAB has implemented in a gen general way is that you can have complex numbers. I can define a complex number x is equal to 4 plus 5 times i. I have a typo there, 5 plus i. Okay, so that is a complex number, and if you look in the workspace, there is a new variable that appears x, and it is a double array, but it bytes is 16. Okay, that means it has to store both the real part and the imaginary part in 8 bytes each, but it is just one variable, x. Okay, um, so I'm going to define a vector of variables in a very simple uh, using a simple syntax, x is equal to 0, 0 0.1, 2 times pi. Now, what does this mean? Here again, I have a typo. 0.1, semicolon, 2 times pi. So, I'm assigning a variable x a set of values, and the values start from 0, and the semicolon says that it's going to start and go in the increments of 0.1. So the second number that appears here is the increment. And then another semicolon. Then the last number is the final value. So the right-hand side of the equal sign basically says, produce me a set of numbers from 0 to 2 pi in intervals of 0.1. And then assign it to the variable x. Now, pi is a built-in var variable. In the sense, MATLAB knows the value of the pi. Similarly, it knows the value of a few other uh, mathematical constants that are uh, defined. So if I enter this, I'm going to get a string of numbers going from 0 to say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, all the way down to 6.2. And this array x has 63 elements and it's again a double precision array. Now, I've, this is a simple way of creating a whole string of numbers. Now, if I want to calculate, for example, uh, y is equal to sine of x, what's going to happen is MATLAB is going to take that array x, every element in that array x, and pass it to the sine function, and the sine function will return the value of sine of that x, and that will be stored in y. So y will be a vector of the same length as x. This is how MATLAB again generalizes from scalars to vectors to matrices all the operations. Now sine is a built-in function, a trigonometric function. There are thousands of such functions available in MATLAB and many of them have been implemented in this generic fashion. So if you pass it a vector, it returns a vector. If you pass it a matrix, it will return a matrix of numbers. Carrying out the operation in each element as necessary or in some cases depending on the meaning of the operation or the meaning of the function. So here I'm going to just get a string of numbers stored in the array y which are the sign of the value that are stored in x. Now I can plot x versus y by simply saying plot x comma y. Okay, this is going to generate a graph for me, which is the graph of the sine function. On the x-axis I have a string of values for x, on the y-axis it's the sine of that value, and these data points are generated in interval of 0.1. So it is connected by a straight line between the data points, but it appears as a smooth curve. I'm going to close this window now to continue the demonstration with um, other features. For example, if I pass the sine function, the matrix T, it will produce another matrix, and I'm not assigning this to a particular value, so you will notice uh, variable, so you'll notice that it goes to A and S. And this is basically the sign of the first element of the matrix T, and this is the sign of the 
uh, second element in the first uh, row, etc. Okay, this is how MATLAB has generalized um, the implementation of many of its functions. You can write your own function, and this is what makes MATLAB extensible and more powerful. And um, we will learn more about how to write functions and how to interpret error messages, etc., in subsequent uh, modules. That's enough for now. <laughs>